Other gear seekers are Nick. If you've been looking at the cost of SSD storage lately, you would have noticed that it's progressively getting cheaper by the day. Even NVMe drives have been getting a lot cheaper. However, if you want the benefits of lightning fast PCIe Gen 4 drives, you're gonna have to pay a little bit more. And if price isn't an issue, then I think you've clicked on the right video. If all out speed is what you need, then the one terabyte Seagate Fire CUDA 520 might be right up your alley. So let's check it out. Let me get this out of the way first. To get the most out of this drive, you're gonna need a PCIe Gen 4 compatible motherboard and CPU combo. So you're looking at either like a Ryzen 3000 CPU or third gen Threadripper, along with an X570 or TRX40 board. Well, that, that, that's for now, and that's only in the desktop space as well. The FireCuda 520 M.2 SSD is Seagate's fastest consumer grade M.2 SSD to date, and it's designed for PC enthusiasts, for gamers, for overclockers, and in Seagate's own words, high performance workstations. It offers an ultra fast PCIe Gen 4x4 interface that offers sustained peak write and read speeds of 5000 by 4400 megabytes per second. Absolutely pulverizing SATA 6 gig and the older FireCuda 510 by a pretty wide margin. Supporting NVMe 1.3, the FireCuda 520 delivers excellent random read and write speeds with performance of around 760K by 700K IR and like a lot of other PCIe Gen 4 drives on the market, the FireCuda 520 also uses the Fizen E16 controller to get its business done. The drive also is fully PCIe Gen 3 compatible just in case you don't have a motherboard that supports Gen 4. It also comes with a five year limited warranty and should give you around 1.8 million hours of use before any type of failure. That's around 205 years. All of that's well and good. And to be honest, it's just a bunch of stuff that you can see on Seagate's website. And yeah, it's a drive, but that's not what we're here to do. And that's not what we do around here. What I decided to do was put six of the available M.2 drives I have available right now. And I put it through a crazy amount of testing. And the way we tested this was we filled every single drive to 50% capacity and ran five types of tests 20 times and calculated the average speed of all of those 20 tests conducted. We ran a one gig test, a four gig test, a 16 gig test, a 32 gig test, and a 64 gig test on all six drives to give the results some context. This means we ran upwards of around 3000 benchmarks over two days to build this new NVMe database. We only did thermal testing on the FireCuda 520 because it's basically the focus of this video. And to be honest, all of this took such a colossal amount of time, I, I didn't really feel like it was relevant to do the thermals for every other drive. And uh, all, all of this is basically why we didn't upload a video yesterday as well. And the drives tested are the only drives that I have. And if I didn't test something, then I clearly don't have one. So please don't ask why we didn't test a certain drive. I literally just don't have one. So strap yourself in ladies and gents, we're about to throw around 40 graphs at your eyeballs. Uh, it's a lot of information to unpack and sorry in advance, but I'll see you on the other side.
testing it's pretty clear that the fire cuda 520 is the fastest of the lot but only by a slight margin when you compare it to the orish n4 drive of the same capacity the interesting thing for me with that drive is though they're both drives that use the same fires and e16 controller the thing is though the numbers are so close that in almost all of the tests they're with inside a margin of error anyway so I'll let you guys decide which one you think is better value or whichever drive is the best and there's a lot of variation between all of the drives and they all come in at different price points for different use cases and different capacities and I actually think this video has a pretty good sample of drives that you might consider buying from the entry level all the way up to the high end and there's other things to consider as well with varying amounts of cash and capacity and with the pool of drives, I, I think that, um, yeah, I can only provide you the information that I can gather from this pool of drives. And like usual, this is only stuff that is available to me and just take all this info with a grain of salt. The next thing though is, I was curious about the Fire Cuda 520 and why it didn't include any heat sinks. And let's put this into perspective. Typically for PCIe Gen 4 drives, they would either have a built-in heat sink or they would tell you to use the heat sink on your motherboard. However, I couldn't find anywhere that you said you had to do that with this drive. So I'm gonna go off topic for a minute. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions with flash memory. And if we drill down to the way flash memory works at a molecular level and talk about everything without trying to bore you to death, flash memory has always had an optimal operating temperature. And yeah, this is just pretty basic physics, meaning that cooler drives don't always equal the best performance in terms of both sustained workloads and sustainability and stability kind of like your car um if you don't let it warm up and you just start thrashing it it's going to perform really poorly and you're going to wear it out and a similar thing also applies to flash memory with all of that info unpacked seagate claims that the maximum performance to still get optimal performance out of the fire q to 520 should be around the 70 degree mark anything below that and yeah you should be stable and anything above that is outside of the drive spec i'm going to spoil this for you guys as well and i'm going to do this before i show you any of the temperatures with and without the heat sinks and in both cases the drive performed identically within a margin of error so i'm not even going to talk about the speeds achieved because it was literally the same as what you just saw on the graph so yeah uh, i'm just doing this for people who ask so yeah let's check it out To what I said at the start, PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drives are expensive, but you're getting crazy fast speeds. Whether you actually need those speeds and want to pay for them is really up to you. Personally, with our use case, the extra speed is nice, but it's not essential. And I personally use the Aorus drive as the working drive for all the editing that I do, and the extra speed's been nice, but again, it's not essential. However, I do like that the capacities of the Gen 4 drives are actually increasing over time. And that can only mean one really good thing in the long run. Drives are gonna get a lot cheaper and M.2 drives that are Gen 3 drives are also gonna get a lot cheaper from here on out. So if you're interested in grabbing the Seagate Fire Cuda 520, they come in a few capacities. They come in a 500 gig capacity, a one terabyte capacity, and a two terabyte capacity. The one terabyte drive is the one that we showed in this video. It's going for around 230 US dollars, or around 430 Australian dollars at the time of filming this video. Let me know if you guys use any Gen 4 drives in the comments down below. I'm curious to see what everyone's using and whether or not you've jumped to Gen 4 storage. And I would kind of want to know what drives you guys swear by. Also. Let me know what current Gen 3 drives you're using and if you've had any stability issues. 
I kind of want to dive into that as well and try and get my hands on some of the drives so we can expand our database and reproduce any problems you guys are having with drives because yeah, I'm curious to see what the verdict is. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you're not to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And this video took an absolute crazy amount of time to put all the data together and I'm exhausted, but it's good to have all this information for future videos. So yeah, hope you en hope you enjoyed it. I'm exhausted. Yep. Float plane, join button, all that stuff. See you guys later.